this video, we're going to take a couple um, problems here that um, you are being asked to find the derivative of an integral. Lots of different ways that the problem can be set up. This is one possible way that would indicate to you that you are taking the derivative of an integral. You're asking for that derivative of this integral. All right, so it's a pretty straightforward process. Basically, all we have to do is take this upper limit, plug it into the function. So when I do that, then I'll have a 2 times a 3t squared and then plus 5. After you plug that upper limit in, then you are going to take the derivative of that upper limit. So the derivative of the upper limit there is going to be a 6t. All right, minus. All right, think fundamental theorem of calculus here. All right, take the bottom limit, plug it in. So then I'm going to have a 2 times a 4 plus that 5 and then times the derivative of that lower limit there, which is zero. All right, so that makes this whole entire product zero. It falls out, just a matter of simplifying here. So we'll have a 6t squared plus a five, multiplying that there with the 6t, distributing it, we'll have a simplified answer of a 36t to the third plus 30t. So pretty straightforward. Uh, problem there. You take the upper limit, plug it into the function, multiply it times the derivative, and then subtract, plug in the lower limit, multiply it times the derivative of that lower limit. All right, now that's not the only way that a question can look. Something like this, they could say, all right, if f of x is equal to this integral, all right, then find f prime of 1. So this would be, you know, finding a numerical value after you have taken the derivative of an integral. Okay, so let's first start out with just finding that derivative. So lowercase f prime of x. All right, now same process. We're going to take that upper limit, plug it into the function. So I'm going to have a square root of 1 plus an x to the third raised to the fourth. Okay, and then times the derivative of that upper limit. So I'll have a 3x squared. Subtract. Now do the same thing with the lower limit. Take that lower limit, plug it into the function. So we'll have a square root of a 1 plus, plugging in that x squared to the fourth power, multiplying it times the derivative of that lower limit, 2x. All right, so again, just going through and simplifying here. Um, let's just do this as power raised to a power. So we'll have an x to the 12th there. And then let's just move that to in front. All right, so we'll have a 3x squared times the square root of a 1 plus x to the 12th power raised to a power, multiply those exponents. And then minus, again, let's just move that 2x in front, square root of 1 plus power raised to a power, multiplying there, x to the 8th. All right, and really how far you simplify there because ultimately we're trying to find the derivative at 1. We have an expression there that we can plug 1 into now. So f prime of 1, all right, so 3 times 1 squared is going to be 3 times the square root of basically a 1 plus a 1 minus 2 times 1 will give us a 2 on the outside, square root of 1 plus another 1 there on the inside. Doing a little bit of simplifying here, I'll have a 3 square root of a 2 minus a 2 square root of a 2. They are like radicals. I can go ahead and get all the way down to a square root of 2. So pretty straightforward, um, finding that derivative of an integral. It's the overall arching second fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, and then on this one, a particular numerical value since we're plugging a number into that derivative. Definitely, thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, please share with your friends so that they can benefit too. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.